Um, sorry, so I will be talking about what is that I think everybody um, is talking about. Um, so basically give you a, a hopefully simple explanation what Agile actually is. Uh, I will try to do it in easy non-technical language so any of you can uh, understand and relate and I'll try to um, use some real life examples so again that should be uh, relatively simple to, uh, to grasp. Um, I know that uh, Laura already did my introduction which I missed but quickly I'm gonna tell you who I am and why I'm actually here talking to you uh, about Agile. So um, my background um, is from business analyst. Uh, so I started working as a business analyst and moved to become a scrum master. So working again with become more agile, uh, getting grasp of scrum and Kanban. And then I moved to become a coach. So again, working with the digital teams in technology, but also helping organization to more agile. So I had exposure working within the team, um, as a team member, then working as a scrum master, and then working with different teams trying to uh, get them to be so kind of like a wide experience uh, from different angles. So what is actually that Agile thing then? So Agile is all about continuous delivery of the small chunks of works, which are called increments, uh, throughout the small cycles with frequent feedback loops so you can continuously improve. So basically you take a big piece of work, you see how you can potentially break it into the smaller chunks and deliver throughout the cycle. And you frequently look at the things that doesn't work, how you can potentially improve of it, you frequently ask for feedback as well uh, of customers who can deliver value to them and then improve in the next cycle and that you can find on the website. But I will try to kind of explain how does it um, work in more like a simple way. So I'll try to use like a metaphor of our example of wedding dress, agile methodology and uh, wedding dress to have in common which might be uh, surprisingly, but uh, they are really similar. So both of them are project and the project, uh, time to deliver something at the end of, the, uh, of that project. And that product is your wedding dress or in Agile, it could be a software, it could be a physical product, whatever to build. Um, both of them have got defined or limited budget and defined time. So again, you've got some sort of defined money that you'd prefer to spend on uh, on your wedding dress and again you've got uh, limited time because you've got your wedding date set so uh, this is something you usually don't move what um, we usually move in agile is scope so that is something that is adjustable so depending on your limitation by budget or time you um, increase. So you can have, let's say if you're getting married in two weeks, you're going to probably um, get simple dress. So the scope is going to be smaller, but if you've got more, more time, more time, uh, more money, then you can build something and create something uh, uh, more sophisticated. Quality. So quality is in the center of agile and again in the center of creating your wedding dress because ultimately you want your wedding dress to look great and the same in agile we want to deliver products that are high quality so customers are happy. Um, So before we're gonna kind of dive um, deeper into the agile, I just wanted to kind of explain the difference between project and product, because sometimes sometimes people don't really see a difference between them, which is quite actually crucial to understand. Um, I think agile uh, methodology it really helps because agile is more often uh, nowadays focusing on delivering products, actually than uh, projects. So. What's the difference between product and project? So product is uh, a thing that's got the longer lifetime. So you start um, building a product, then it exists, you can use it. Example is your wedding dress, you get it uh, ready on your wedding day, then you can sell it to someone else, someone else gonna wear it on, your, uh, on their wedding days, and then you decide actually gonna discharge it or sell it or cut it or whatever you're gonna do with it. So products got 
there are there like physical things or like services that you provide uh, that've got quite long um, lifetime why the projects got uh, limited in time so they are relatively shorter than the product lifetime and they tend to deliver something at the end of the uh, of the project so in the product lifetime you can have multiple projects so let's say project one for your wedding dress will be uh, designing your wedding dress and then when you've got the finished design then you can start a new project i know getting the um, additional like the accessories and stuff like that could be a separate project if you decide to do it and then the project three could be um, you actually decided to sell it so that's gonna be uh, finding the right cleaner or how do you pack that for for selling so that's gonna be the pro project within the actual product uh, so how that, that is clear quite often um, from my experience the projects could be things that happen to the product that are sometimes um, not independent of us so like regulatory changes like gdpr was something that happened to a lot of product and services so that was example of the project that need to happen to the multiple uh, products so again coming back to agile and wedding dress what they actually got in common so um for the agile you need to gather some requirements so you again do it in cycle and try to find out as much information as you need and the same is for your wedding dress you've got some needs you've got wishes you are doing some research reviewing different website pinterest maybe visiting at different uh, shops you try on different stars before you actually decide which one actually fits you and which is the one that you want to uh, get then it's design stage and it's the same for your wedding dress. You are designing the product that you're going to be wearing and the same is with Agile. And that again work in a cycle, in a iterations with the frequent feedback loop. So you can create the design that you really, really want. Uh, then uh, you reach development stage. So it's the stage when you build the product. And with your wedding dress it's the same. This is the creation. So you are creating the wedding dress that you want to wear. Either you decide that you're actually going to go and buy it in the shop or you hire a designer who's going to um, make it for you or you, you can even make it yourself. So that's the process. And again, that goes through the iteration. Then it's a testing phase when uh, you actually go and try things on to see whether they, they're meeting your requirements. And if they not, you can always come back to any of the stages previously because in Agile and the same with the wedding dress, you just want to ensure that this is the best results and you try it as often as possible to ensure that you are getting the best product, the best wedding dress uh, you want. Testing quite often, um, especially in the wedding dress example, um, meets with like feedback review. So you tried it on once, something doesn't doesn't fit or maybe it's too tight in here or maybe you need a bit um, extra decoration in here. So you provide the feedback and then the changes are made to your wedding dress and then you try it on again. So you can be in that loop for quite long period of time. But just remember about your limitations. So you either have got limited budget or limited time or both. So depending on those things, that cycle gonna uh, be limited and the same is with agile you either have got unlimited budget uh, or you've got limited time depending on what you're actually building and then it's the last phase implementation when you've got the finished uh, product finished a thing to implement on the market and you've got your wedding dress you can actually wear on your wedding day so again finish things that you are happy with um, as a customer and um, so the next thing is just kind of uh, maybe moving a bit away from that metaphor about um, wedding dress I just wanted to tell you about a couple of other characteristics because it's worth to know them because sometimes people think that you either are agile or you are not but agile is the thing that is kind of the mi mindset it's behavior so you can just take one of the things from the agile characteristics and become more agile it's never all or nothing approach you can do do become more agile again in incremental way so breaking that into small chunks and doing that in cycle so you can learn and improve 
So what are those agile characteristics? So it's incremental and iterative. So again, breaking things into small chunks and do it in cycles, delivering just enough. Uh, this is one of my favorite because um, I'm quite perfectionist. So I like to polish things so they're just amazing and ready. But sometimes my good enough is perfect and ideal for other person, for, for my client. So it's just focusing that you deliver just enough. And what is great about Agile that after one iteration, you can actually deliver amazing customer value and they could be happy and, and go away with amazing product. Um, then, as I've mentioned earlier, uh, in Agile, we're focusing on quality because ultimately you want to deliver great products to your customer. How do you do it? Through the collaboration, face-to-face -face communication and continuous feedback. Again, coming back to your wedding dress example, you can send somebody an email and say, I want my wedding dress to be long, white and have short sleeves. And then you can imagine that they're gonna build something like that, but it's gonna, look better uh, when you're actually um, gonna talk to them, meet with them frequently, ask them for feedback and provide that feedback, then they're gonna build a, a better value product for yourself. Uh, what is also amazing about Agile uh, is that it's not afraid of change. So change is really welcomed because you are working in a short cycles. So at the end of the, each cycle, you can introduce changes of the requirements. And again, it could be small tweaks or it could be just totally changing direction. But because you are doing this in a short cycles, the risk uh, is reduced. Again, uh, worth to be mindful about how many changes we are introducing and remember that we always got some either limited time or limited budget or both so those things are worth to consider in agile uh, we value and one of the key characteristics is looking for that continuous improvement and again i think this is the thing that we do naturally as people we stop and think on how we could do things differently what we could have done in the cycle to make the better product or to improve the process so the next time it's gonna be better. The way Agile feels that it works is by having self-organized team. Um, so the teams that are given freedom to operate, but then given some frames um, and boundaries uh, to operate within, and then they can kind of organize themselves within those frames because they know what the value customer wants and how to do it. They can deliver a great product. Then Agile works pretty well with the teams that are cross-functional. So it kind of believes that within the team, you've got all the skills uh, that are needed to, to build that particular product. And then two of my favorites that are uh, at the end is like empowerment. Uh, so being empowered to make the right decisions about building the product, but also being empowered to sometimes tell the customer that this is not the right thing to do because customers, I'm working in a consultancy at the stage, so they could come and you can do things for them and charge customers money. But sometimes you just need to be empowered and tell, you know what, that's not gonna be working. Uh, maybe we should try something different because we've got the experience of building that product in a different way. We can actually give you what you need, but not necessarily what you wanted. So again, focusing on that value and satisfaction. And again, what is great about Agile, because you're doing this in short cycles, each time you do it, it's easier. So this is like with walking. First time when you walk, you are quite wobbly and you don't know how to put steps, you fall down quite a lot, but more often you do it, the things are just easier and easier and easier. So the Agile teams kind of achieve steadiness um, after a couple of the cycles and then they become great, greater teams. Um, then I'd like to introduce you to what are Agile frameworks, because I think this is something you can hear quite a lot. Uh, and sometimes people got confused what actually Agile is and what the framework is. So I just wanted to clarify that with you, for you as well. So Agile framework is like a practical steps to introduce you to the methodology so you can get it implemented into your life or work. So think about it like a checklist, like a step-by-step -step instruction. Um, that just makes your life basically easier. Um, frameworks gives you tools, instructions, define for your roles and responsibilities, so you don't have to do it yourself. 
based on the methodology. Um, so it just makes the implementation easier. But what is really important about frameworks is that it's just a frame. This is not prescriptive way of doing agile. This is just frame you need to put your picture in. So your organization, your team, your context. And it may be that your one organization work in Scrum or Kanban like that, but the difference is going to take the same methodology and the same framework and work in that fashion completely differently because they are trying to fit it into their context. Uh, the two most popular uh, frameworks are Scrum and Kanban. Uh, they differ uh, a lot, so I'm just going to give you a really high level overview. So Kanban is all about um, visualization of, of work. So it's just, I think all of you actually did it at some point of your life. You created a list of the tasks to do, then you kind of started to do them and then cross them off when they're done. So this is how Kanban works. You are trying to ensure that you move the items uh, through the flow as efficiently as possible. You are focusing on the most important item um, first and you're pulling the items are they coming through uh, going through yourself so at this stage you're focusing on the most important item uh, what is quite important in Kanban is the flow so improving the flow that's the key and again in Kanban iterations and cycles are pretty quick because they are focusing on the items that are in progress Scrum is slightly more structured um, and that's why quite a lot of organization initially start with Scrum because it's a bit more prescriptive. It gives you a lot of different like roles, uh, meetings, uh, artifacts, definitions that you can basically use and apply. So just quickly to go through what the Scrum is. So Scrum is working in usually two weekly iterations. You've created a list of the items called product everything you need to do into the session called sprint owner the product what the team the session called sprint planning and they decide what they gonna manage to do it in that iteration and they create sprint backlog so again a list of things items uh, goals that needs to be done within that iter iteration uh, then the product owner why and leave the team to deliver that product during that some product owner works with the people who've got something to say about the product. So they might be customers, they might be different stakeholders, they might be finance team or legislation. So, and they creating and adding things to the product backlog and get them prioritized. So in the next iteration, the team got items ready uh, to work on. Then the team works with uh, they've got process all the skills to do the things, but they've got the person who helped them to do it, which is called the Scrum, Scrum Master. So that's, um, that's kind of like a wedding planner, coming back to the wedding dress example. So that's the person who ensures that everything's kind of works well, any blockers are removed. The team uh, is focused on getting the work done and they are not distracted, uh, attending different meetings that are not needed, clarifying the information. This is the person who kind of get the team to use the best and take the best out of the scrum. The team meets daily to discuss the, the goals for the next day and identify the blockers. And then at the end of the sprint, they've got the sprint review when they talk about what they've built and ideally they've got finished increment so some sort of the product that uh, they're gonna deliver uh, and take that feedback about the product and that is fed again into the product backlog uh, and then uh, they meet on the session called sprint retrospective which is the session to talk about the process about the things how they can potentially improve as a team what they could potentially do differently to become better. And they take the item from those sessions and feed them into the next sprint planning session. And then the cycle start again. 
So really high level, but I hope that gives you a bit of overview what are the two different um, uh, frameworks. I also kind of created a, a quick summary uh, for you. So Kanban, visualize your workload, pull approach, you're limiting your work in progress. So again, you're focusing on the most important items right now. You are improving the, the workflow and you've got the continuous delivery. With the Scrum, you deliver things at the end of the sprint. Um, the iterations are called sprints. You've got different roles. You've got the different artifacts, which are product backlog, sprint backlog, and increments. Scrum defines for you different meetings, who should attend, how they should look like, and the push approach. Here. So the product owner pushes the things from uh, from the product backlog to the sprint backlog. Um, so quickly recapping what 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 um, we learned about the gel. So Agile is all about continuous delivery of the small chunks of work throughout the small cycles with frequent feedback loops so you can continuously improve. Agile is everywhere and this is natural way of getting any work done. Um, you can introduce Agile in a small chunks. There is not all nothing approach because again, you can do be, become Agile by doing Agile. And Agile Frameworks gives you practical steps how to introduce Agile into your life or work and Scrum and Kanban are the most common Agile Frameworks. Um, before we're gonna finish, I just wanted to ask you now to um, do a bit of the action planning. So if you now can take like the post-it notes or whether you've got any notes and, and a pen and write up one action you would like to take to become more Agile, that is achievable to do to implement within the next seven days. It could be anything you don't have to share with us, but this is something like kind of a take on for you from this session. I've got a couple of examples because um, I feel that sometimes people struggle with it. Some of them are from the personal life on the screen. Some of them are from the work life. So it might be just, I'm going to call my friends rather than text them again you are talking about collaboration, face-to-face -face conversation, rather than uh, just text them. You will schedule a weekly review with your partner to discuss how are we doing with our budget on our parenting goals. This is to ask for the continuous feedback and uh, you will start planning your Christmas shopping list and see how you can potentially break it down into smaller chunks. So again, taking a big beast like a Christmas shopping and trying to break it down into the smaller chunks and plan them in. So that's kind of from the personal life. And then from the work life, you can schedule 15 minutes catch up with the team weekly just to talk to them. You can introduce retrospective at the end of, the, of each sprint and see how you can improve. Uh, or the simple action could be just read about Scrum and Kanban. So you can see how you can introduce that. Um, to your work. So I'm gonna give you like a minute uh, to finish that off. And our questions. <laughs> right, okay. So I think Elise and Emma were monitoring the, the chat window. So you they'll be they'll present some of the questions to you. Yes. So a little bit further back. Um, um, Marzena, when you started talking about the, the Scrum approach versus Kanban, your audio mm -hmm. caught your audio cut out just a little bit. And if you could, uh, I don't know if you can go back to that slide for a minute and talk to the first couple of, um, let's see, keep going. Yes, that one. Right where it starts with the product backlog. Um, just that, that first bit, I think. And um, then we've got mm -hmm. a couple of other questions. Okay. Um, so the product backlog uh, is just a list of the things that needs to be done about that product. And that could be anything that could be customer needs, that could be uh, technical information, architect information, that could be legislative information. So this is everything that needs to be done about that product so it will deliver value to the customer. Then your product backlog is prioritized so the most important the most valuable things are on the top and you basically take the most valuable the highest priority items and push them into the 
a sprint backlog. Okay. I think I think that's really helpful because I think we caught the mm -hmm. the segue into the other phases. So, mm -hmm. so thanks for that. So yeah. we've got a couple of questions uh, related as well. Um, this one's from uh, Emma M and from Cleveland, Ohio. She says, uh, "I frequently see people working in Scrum with product owners in sprints, but visually they use a Kanban board. So this seems to work." What, in your opinion, is the upside or downside of mixing uh, frameworks in that way? So it's mixing, I think, because um, you need to remember that frameworks are just frame. There's uh, nobody said that you can't mix it. You can pick and choose whatever works for your context. Uh, it's quite common to visualize your work. Uh, and this is not... Uh, this is not owned by Kanban. I think people tend to do, like you create a checklist, I definitely do it. So it's not definitely owned by Kanban. That mm -hmm. is definitely inherited by Scrum. But I don't see any uh, disadvantage of mixing the uh, frameworks. I even see that it's sometimes better because then you understand what works for you, what works for your organization. Uh, but somebody told me once, first try, uh, that if you want to introduce Scrum, try Scrum per book per 100 sprints, and then you can change anything you want, because then you are ensuring that you actually understand what works and how does it work, uh, and then you can tweak it to fit into your context, rather than then losing things straight after, I don't know, a first couple of iterations, because you just don't understand them well. Got it. Got it. Okay, a couple of a couple of quick ones. We want to want to get to this so that we can, we can go to Susanna. But these are really great questions. Mm -hmm. You've worked in a lot of different customer environments. So, do you have any tips for uh, folks out there whose boss might be less agile than than you? Um, any any quick mm -hmm. tips you can give? Um, I think you don't. I think own experience. I once um, moved from boss who was really agile into agile is and I made a hard work <laughs> uh, trying to explain that to him in like lemon terms in the similar way I'm doing that to you. If you just can try skip the uh, terminology from your language and just act like Agile, behave like Agile, introduce, don't introduce Scrum, uh, just introduce, oh, shall we have like just a meeting at the end of the project, let's say, so we can discuss. So I think, I think we've lost uh, uh, the, the audio uh, from Morjana, but I think uh, basically let, let's put some of the, the terminology in, in plain language and explain the process. And that, that, that makes total sense to me. Um, we, we have uh, uh, one other question, if we can do this in a minute, which was, um, and I think Sam asked this, I, I think it's similar to a previous question, but maybe slightly different. Can multiple agile methodologies be used together at the same time? I think we have lost her. Yeah, we have. 